which wouldn't have been great. Uh, oh! Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver and welcome to another episode of our UK Autopilot City Tour. Today we're here in Gloucester and we're going to be going around Gloucester and through it to see how it works and how good the city's roads are for autopilot and autonomy in the future. Now we're going around it to start off on so these are going to be kind of the bigger and better roads I guess and we're just going to try and give it as much leeway as we can to do what it wants. It is going to be a little bit tougher today because the weather as you can see it's pretty grim as it is most times in the UK I seem to record for this uh, for this channel. But yeah, it's pretty bad weather. I've also remembered the tape, so the tape is now on, so you can see the wheel turning a little bit more. Some people asked me to put in uh, like a force sensor to see how many Gs of force I'm getting when I'm braking, probably not Gs, but instead what you can use is this. So you can see that obviously if this goes all the way down here, it brakes really hard for some reason and regenerates its energy. If it goes all the way up here, it means it accelerates hard. So there you can, roughly judge kind of how uh, like there we go we're braking and that's kind of yeah that's that's all right braking that's not too hard and it only went down to there so hopefully that will give you a little bit of a more demonstration on what i'm actually feeling in the in the car in itself so what have i know what do i know from gloucester well it's actually got pretty good roads or at least these roads around it are definitely pretty good uh they're nice and wide they're nice and laned most of the, the lines are nice and clear so hopefully fingers crossed this actually should work pretty well my plan is to follow this road all the way down here and then go up Cole Avenue and then cut back across through Gloucester. Hopefully you might not have been able to see that actually, but basically that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going, going down the A430, coming up Cole Avenue, up the A38, and then I'll be going straight through the center of Gloucester. So here we go. Is it going to pick the right-hand lane or the left-hand lane? It does pick this lane which is actually sensible for it to do but obviously the other car went in the other lane so it may have got a little bit confused but you can see here that this actually is going towards a roundabout by the looks of it so yeah we're coming up to a roundabout let's see what happens as we get to this roundabout it's a little bit of a weird one but i'm gonna have to obviously take back control and just go around it myself it's a weird thing this it's not really a roundabout it's more like an island that you have to flow around and I, i'm not sure what it's for to be totally honest uh but it is a little bit of an odd one okay autopilot back on we'll go up to 40 which is the speed limit and follow the way around so it looks like all the roads all the roads around gloucester are actually dual carriageways so that's pretty cool you can see here we need to merge in behind this car here so the car is braking and yeah just slotted in really nicely behind this volkswagen here I don't know if you can see out the back. I hope you can. There you go. You can definitely see out the back. Now, I always forget one thing. Every time I start filming, I always forget one thing. This time it was the rear view camera. Okay, so again, the road does go on to the right here. So I'd expect it to follow this right lane unless it sees that lane. Yeah, okay, it's decided to go in that left lane. So you saw it dart there into the left lane. It gave us a little warning down here while it did that. But it actually did it really well. Again, no lines in the middle here as we go over an intersection but that's fine, it just follows this road with no problems. And it's actually doing this pretty well. So like I said, these are the outskirts of Gloucester. So these roads are meant for fast driving around Gloucester, or at least, you know, not much traffic, not many issues just to get around it. So it's when we get into the city, it's going to give it a real test. So I've got the car set to five seconds behind the car in front. I'm actually gonna bring that all the way up to one, just because you saw there, it, it didn't seem quite natural to stop that far behind. So we've just made it a little bit closer and you can see now it's getting a little bit closer to that VW ahead of us. So what have I noticed? This is actually a brand new software, by the way. That's what I forgot to tell you guys at the start. Let me find out what software this is. This is 2019.20.2.1. So that little dot one on the end there was actually added last night in a software update and I haven't noticed anything different. And I've got to say earlier, I actually had it crash on me again. The autopilot software did crash on me again, uh, like it did in a video. So I was a little bit worried about that, but it hasn't done it since. So fingers crossed that's not going to become an issue. Okay, here again, the road splits into two lanes. Is it going to decide a lane? It's picked this right hand lane, uh, which is fine, I guess, for it to do. And it's just going to follow this lane here with no problems. Uh, I actually want to be in the left lane, but obviously it won't lane change. We know it won't lane change, so I'm going to have to bring it off 
on my own in a second and go into that left lane. So just going to do that now. So it seems that with the navigation on, uh, it's a little bit better because you guys can obviously oh, see where we're going. As the road kind of went a little bit weird there, the car had a little bit of a hiccup, but it's fine now. And we're into this 40 which has really nice lines. So you can see it's got a nice left line. Oh, we've got a person. Hello, person. What's the car gonna think? The car saw him and then didn't do anything because obviously he wasn't a threat or anything to us. So that's quite good. This Volvo is indicating left. Don't know if he's a little bit confused, maybe. Oh no, he is actually going left. Oh, weird. So yeah, this road again, this is fine. I can actually go all the way up to the 40 mile an hour speed limit here and speed it up a little bit. Gloucester is actually really, really good for this kind of driving. I like the way that Gloucester's made. Yes, the roads could do with a little bit of work. They're a little bit horrible to actually drive on. But the way Gloucester works, if you can see on the map here, it's such a nice ring road the whole way around the city that just keeps the congestion out in the middle. Okay, so we're changing lanes a little bit there. You saw it wanting to go in that right lane, but it's decided to stay in this lane, which is correct. And now it's just a little bit, he yeah, a little bit weird there. It like broke and then accelerated and broke and accelerated. I think it wasn't sure where it was going, but now it's back on track. But yeah, like I said, it's got this ring road here and this road all the way back down there that go around the city really nicely. And I think that's what we're gonna need. We're gonna need some better bypasses so that cars can go around the cities easier. We're still waiting for that roundabout update. Once they can do roundabouts, it will really change the game. From my average driving, I probably use autopilot like eight out of 10 times. Really, I do. Eight out of 10 times, eight out of 10 journeys, I use autopilot. And uh, when it can do roundabouts, it's gonna be able to do the majority of journeys for me. So that's the only thing that we're waiting for. Well, that and obviously corners and stuff like that. But the majority of things that seem to stop me are definitely roundabouts. You can see here again though, cars are actually parked off the road. Unlike Birmingham and other cities, they're actually parked off the road on their side bays, which is really good. And again, this is what I was saying here about Gloucester. Really nice wide roads, easy to follow. Yeah, I like it, it's working well as well. This is definitely the best autopilot that has worked in a long time. So here we are coming up, slowing down to the lights. That's a lot smoother. That is a lot smoother though. Wow, okay, well done autopilot. It's still too far away, even though I've got it on one, as you can see there. It was on one, I just flicked it back to show you. Um, yeah, it's still too far away. I wish it got a little bit closer and broke closer to them, but I liked it. It was smooth, which was very, very nice. Okay, we're actually turning right here, apparently, at this roundabout, but we're not. We're going to be taking the left turning and going now, the real challenge, through the rest of Gloucester. The road is starting to widen here and the car's taken the right-hand lane instead of the left-hand lane. I actually think it took those speed camera markings as road markings and that's what made it go into this lane, which is quite interesting. I've never seen speed camera markings uh, modify how the car drives. So that was interesting to see. With no problems really, we've got a tight turn here but we do want to be in this left lane, of course, because that turns right there. And again, it leaves a big gap. Now, if someone wanted to cut in last minute, they would definitely pick the Tesla. And that's not something that I want cars to do. I don't want them to pick on Teslas in thinking that that was the car that you, know, you can just butt in for. So it's done the corner well. But at this point, you can see the lines disappear. So what's it going to do? It kind of has gone across it. And actually, it has gone the correct way. But you could see the car going kind of left, right, left, right. And here, it's definitely going to struggle. And oh, it was totally going to curb it there. Oh, wow. That was so close to curbing it. Uh, yeah, not, not, not for my liking that. So there, it got a little bit too tight. And as you saw, curbs came up and lines disappeared. And that, of course, made a huge issue for the Tesla uh, autopilot system. But that's kind of the first issue we've had, really, I would say. Again, a tight corner, then the lines do disappear, but no problems here. And then another really tight corner, and it's done it absolutely fine. Now, what lane's it gonna pick here? It's picked the left lane to go into, and it's just gonna sit behind this discovery. Again, the distance is just too far away for me. It just feels a little bit awkward. Um, but yeah, there we go. That did that really well. That was the bit that I was actually worried that it wasn't going to be able to do. But as you saw then, it did that really, really well.
So we've got this Audi driver on our right who I've noticed try and cut in behind me a couple of times. And I'm gonna see if he's uh, gonna try and cut in on me at all in this journey. And it, this was the Audi driver that I had to stop for uh, before as well, which is interesting. So you see here, it's followed that left line very nicely and it's staying on that left line without any problems. And it's keeping down this road really well. I'm actually very, very impressed with how it did that. Like really impressed. So I'm gonna turn over to the right hand lane but obviously, as you saw there, that didn't work because we're uh, not on navigating autopilot on one of these roads. This is a horrible bit of road around Glossa that I want to show you here. So as you can see, we go into like this weird nothingness and you can see there's no lines and it's cross lines and it's actually taking us left, uh, which we didn't want to go. We wanted to go down there, but you could see there that the road, the markings were just so strange that it just didn't really work and the car really struggled with it. So I'm not sure how it's gonna do with those kind of things. They definitely need more lines on the road and they definitely need to be worked out a little bit better. So here we go, the center of Gloucester. It is a 20, so I'm gonna bring it down to 20 and let's give it a whirl. You can see that the lines just disappear out of nowhere. So I'm not sure what the car's gonna follow. No, it was going over into the middle of the road. But in all fairness, look at this. This is like, there's, there's no lines, there's, there's nothing really to go by. So what would a car do in this situation? Well. I guess we're kind of finding out it it would struggle still no lines so the car's not picking anything let's hope it picks up this left line here no it's not picked up that left line we'll pick up the lines in front there we go okay we're back onto autopilot and we're going back through the center just to see what it's gonna do so again we've got cars poking out but they are in bays and hopefully the car sees that yep yeah, the car has seen that and is going around the bays which is good we're coming up to a little roundabout which obviously I'm gonna have to take control for. This is a fairly big crossing here that we're gonna to have to do and we're gonna see if the car will get over there. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to, if I'm being totally honest, because the lines do completely disappear, but it can hopefully see that line up ahead, which it does, and it did follow it. Look at that, brilliant. And now we're onto this road, going the correct way. That actually worked really well. I wasn't expecting that to do any of that, if I'm being totally honest. It's gonna be interesting. We've got a cyclist in front of us. Uh, what's the car gonna think? So it can see the cyclist. It's happy to say that it's seen it, uh, but it's just sitting behind it. And that's the correct thing to do. Uh, it should just kind of stay behind him here because it's not quite wide enough for us to, to squeeze past. So we're just gonna wait for the rest of the cars on the right-hand side of the road to disappear. And then I'll go around myself. But that was good. It saw the cyclist, it stopped behind him, gave him plenty of time, gave him plenty of space. Whereas before I've had it and it's not done that at all. Like not at all. Well, I've got to say, I'm really impressed with how the software did all the way there. Uh, I'm going to be taking it off autopilot and going left. So we're coming up to this light. I'm just going to wait and see what the car does. You can see the car did brake. No, it definitely can't see red lights because we were going through that at 30 miles an hour. You can see here, there are no problems sitting behind this big truck. It is going a little bit left and right because it sees the lines last minute, but it is working it well. And then hopefully we're just gonna follow all the way around here. Let's see what lane it picks. We actually wanna go right here. So I wanna go into this little right lane. So it actually did pick correctly for us. It just, I don't think it would have done that last bit. It would have just tried to shoot us over there. So I did pretty well. We've got a slight lane split here. I'm gonna say it's gonna take the right lane, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it has actually taken the right hand lane, which I really wouldn't want it to do in that situation. We really should be in the left lane. There's no reason for us to come over to this right lane. Let's see how it tackles this. Again, no lines there, but slows us down slightly, but is able to do it without a problem. See, this is also where I want to be in the left lane because we might, okay, we won't now that the van's gone, but otherwise we would have just like blasted past everybody, which wouldn't have been great. Uh, oh, cruise control is unavailable and it aborted completely on me for some reason. Not sure what it didn't like there. So we're merging and interestingly enough, the car does want to push past this bus, but I'm not going to let it. So we're just going to see what it does. Oh, it's trying. And the bus is actually coming to a stop, which is very strange. That's why the system was so struggling there and we had to go around it ourselves. 
But yeah, we had a little a little abortion there, and I'm not sure what it aborted for. I think it's because the, the road went left and right and it couldn't decide, but I'm not 100% sure. Again, it's gonna do the exact same thing here, so let's see what the, the car decides. Does it pick that right lane? It's, no, last second, it slammed on and then chose the left lane. This does split into two lanes here, so it's gonna be interesting to see again what lane this actually decides to go with. It looks like it's picked the right lane, uh, and this car's actually going right here, which is not where we wanna go. We're just going straight on. So I'm just gonna let the car do its thing. And let's see what the Tesla does here. This is gonna be interesting. Again, there's no lines. It's a little bit left and right, a little bit left and right. Nothing too bad though, to be honest. And then we're merging back in here. Again, that worked pretty well. How's it gonna merge? That's better. There we go, that was a nice merge. Again, it didn't need to go left. It could have just kept on going straight, but that's fine. A little bit, a little bit of left is no problem. So there we have it, guys. That is autopilot around and through Gloucester. And I'm gonna say, that was the most successful uh, episode we have done yet of autopilot versus the UK. Seriously, that was the best episode. It was smooth, things worked. Yes, we could have lane change and some things did fail, but all in all, that was really good. Now, is that because of the city or is that because of the update? I'm gonna say it's because of the city, but let me know down below in the comments and let me know where I should go next on my UK city tour. Until next time, thank you all so much for watching and don't forget, drive safe.